Welcome to episode 83 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Libertarians on 25 Issues, Free Speech. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time, and Dad represents the delivery. Recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today and then applying that to those around me. I'm taking the concept of a dad that can speak on many different topics and applying it to liberty. But speaking is not enough. It's important to be informed and speak in a manner that invites people to seek out your opinion in the future. This season, I'm joined by local Libertarian City Council candidate Jerry Rarbaugh, known to many as Pastor Tubb or just Tubb. Pastor Tubb, a father of three, shares the same vision I do when it comes to communicating liberty. Prepare for tomorrow's conversation today. The theme for Season 3 of the Liberty Dad Podcast is Libertarians on 25 Issues. Each episode will focus on one of 25 different issues from a libertarian perspective. I got the idea from the book Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. In the next hour or so, you'll become more informed about how libertarians view free speech and we'll discuss the latest in COVID hysteria. With that, let's dive right in. Tub. Yes, sir. We're diving right in. We're diving We're right diving in. We're diving right in. And okay. what people don't realize is by diving right in, he sat here patiently pretending to be a producer yeah. as I got set up because I was a little behind today. Been diving right I in for the past hour or so. Tend to be. Yes, we've yes. been diving right in for the past hour. So, and by diving um, right in, I mean idly sitting by. Absolutely. So if okay. you're looking for somebody that could be a producer for your show, you might Dude, contact Tub. And then maybe I'll put you in the direction of somebody who can actually do it. Right. Like, <laughs> maybe not, I know a guy. I'm not saying you're going to get him, but, you know. I'm not saying reach you want out. me. The, the bigger problem is. You can reach out. He'll All point right. out and be like, why you got that error going on in your life? Oh, yeah. That's altogether different. <laughs> yeah. All right. I might do some of that. That may be the okay. pastor in him. All right. But uh, so at any rate, so today we're talking about free speech. So let's dive in and talk about or let's dive in and, and, and read what the book says. Remember, each one of these topics. Go ahead. No, can 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 I can we get us up there? Oh, yes. Yeah, we're not yeah. on the. Um, there there yeah, we so, go. Yeah, we're, right. we're working on this. All so right. remember each um, each each uh, each thing that we talk about. Oh, I've got a lot of us up there. Let me fix that here. All right, so this is the uh, this is the actual view that the, that the viewers are seeing. Right? There we go. Okay. What I, what I had was I had the um, uh, the preview mode up, and so we were seeing. And, what and we remember were... the simple guy. I mean, like, wait, that's right. not how it's supposed to look. That's not right. what we do. Okay. All right. So, um, see, I'm telling you, good producer right here. Like this guy's got it under. He's. That's, I don't have it together. Let, let's guy. let's understand. The topic of the show is not find other things for Tub to do. <laughs> All right. Don't you have I'm, a lead in for this episode? I'm just like, using my free speech to talk about what Tub might be able to offer other people. And in turn, we will cover about what happens when you use your free speech or consequences to using that <laughs> free speech. <laughs> so, so let's see what the book has to say. Remember, we're going through the book and the book has 25 topics. And what it does is it just gives like a very quick sentence or two on that particular topic. And then we go and we expand upon it. So let's go ahead and hear what it says. It says, absolutely, prohibit any speech you want on your private property, but leave others alone. So yes, your place of employment, church, or private school might prohibit certain speech on their property, but they shouldn't impose their policies on their neighbors. Government should not prohibit or restrict speech. So what do we got, Tub? Okay, well, we can start with the fact that there's a very clear division in the simple explanation of you have private property, Versus government, right? Okay, and 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 once again, I think we tend to fall in line with a lot of these free snaps that they put on there. Like, here's a brief description of what liberty mm -hmm. believe. I think we tend to kind of, yeah, that makes sense, right? So, if we were to look at, can we look at that in order again, so we can kind of see how they're mapping this out because they kind of do a run through, and I can get behind. Okay, is that okay? On when I come to your house, I think you have the right to say, hey, uh, we don't talk like that, right? Like whatever, or or we don't talk about that topic, right? And I think that sometimes we forget the topics fall under free speech. It's not just like, I I think that sometimes we feel like I can say anything I want, right? And I can say mean things to people, or people say you can't say mean things to me, which I'm sure we'll probably end up getting into that, right? Uh, but I like the mm -hmm. idea that he's kind of breaking this separately, saying, hey, you know what, your house, you have a right to say, hey, somebody comes in my house, and we, we don't drop f bombs around here, mm -hmm. or we don't do these type of things. We don't have that conversation. Right. I think that's perfectly fine. I think when he goes on to explain, because you hear a lot of people go, well, my job can't. 
Yes, they can. Right. They very much have that right to. In fact, okay, so when this was going on, there there was, remember, it's been a couple, it's been what, three seasons now, mm-hmm. where they started kneeling in the NFL. Okay. During the right. national anthem. Okay. And they're like, oh, this is their right to do it. Okay. And then I'm like, well, well hang on. Um, you can't go to your job and just make a stand and say, I'm not doing this while this is happening. I'm like, right. you can't do that. Right. Like, well, my job can't stop me. I said, right. yes, your job can. Right. You're on their time. They have a right to say, hey, this is what you do. Or in this case, here's the things you don't talk about. Right. While you're on our time. I right. think they have every right. And then with that, you have the right to go, okay, I'm not going to work here. Right. I think that's perfectly fine also. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, as we continue down, and you jump in because, you know, it's your show and stuff. I'm just the producer. Um, so right. as we move down, I, I, private school, I think the same thing goes. Like, right. I probably you skip am, church. Well, you know, I kind of did. I, is, I, mean, I, I went out right of there. That's the second okay. one. Oh, I, I will do church. I mean, what? You don't want to talk about church stuff no, anymore? You know what's funny? Okay. Man, it's the first time a pastor. No one talking about, about the church. Well, I wow. figured we, we get there. I wasn't looking in order. All right. So, okay. So here's the thing about the church. Now, I, I have a belief as Christians and for Christians that might sometimes make the libertarians, ooh, but I'm speaking to a different group of people mm-hmm. uh, uh, with different standards, uh, stuff along those lines. And now I will tell you that people come into the church and they'll drop F-bombs right. and stuff like that. And and like, do I go, oh my goodness, you need to get out of here? N- no. Right. Do I like it? No. Now, if they came in and they were going to extreme, no, oh, Jesus or anything like that. But whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, now we got to talk for a second. Sure. Uh, for example, um, a while back, um, I was doing a funeral at the church. Oh, boy. Okay. And, and, and so <laughs> here's what happens. And I tell families this all the time. They're like, hey, do you want to let people speak during the funeral? And they're like, someone were like, yeah, you know, I'm like, well, you might want to think about that because sometimes people will say some stuff. Right. You know, and, and so they're like, no, no, we want to open it up. So and I remember I opened it up and there's a guy sitting way in the back, way in the back. And this guy who passed away was a biker guy, kind of. Um, in fact, um, this one here, Elvis impersonator. OK, the whole anyway, the whole other story. So anyway, the guy sitting in the back says, hey, I remember the first time I met him. He hopped on my bike and he rode. Right. <laughs> And I just kind of paused for a second because there it is. <laughs> and, and I just kind of paused for a second and we all kind of laughed a little bit. And, and as we kept talking, like I mentioned that, but I wouldn't say that word, but I wasn't like set off. I right. wasn't like, oh my goodness, shut everything down because this guy said this. Right. You know, and I think that that's our problem. I think that we're coming to a point where we, if I don't like it, nobody gets to say right. it. And right. I might be jumping ahead. So no, no, ahead. no, we're good. We're, we're we're following along. We wanted to follow in order here. Okay. So we went through the employer, the church. Now, what about private schools? Yeah, to me, a lot like, of ways. Can private... Harvard prohibit certain speech? I believe so. Okay. Okay. Because I think that I, I mean I, I know that there's some debate on the entanglement between organizations that maybe accept public monies and right. And, and but, but I think we I think we said that this is different because this is private. Right. School. But it, it will sometimes private schools will accept federal funding okay, uh, or private organizations. Right. Right. And so the question, so then some libertarians will say, oh, well, if they accept public money, then they need to be treated more publicly. And th- there's a debate there to be had. I look at it and I say, who owns it? Is it privately owned? Mm-hmm. Right. Because you can find government funding so almost everything nowadays. Because, there's some form of government right, involvement. Right. Because if you stop federal funding, all of a sudden, mm-hmm. the organization would be in the same situation that it was before then, mm-hmm. effectively. Right. Right. Like it would be owned by the same people. Right. The same people would be making the decisions, so on and so forth. So I look at it and I say, in that particular context, they are privately owned, even if they are receiving subsidies or money from the federal government or even the state government. You know, when I saw that, and, and to be honest with you, in my mind, I didn't go to colleges. I went to like local private schools okay because like, i because i taught it once so in my mind when i read that i didn't think about colleges to be honest with you i right. thought of local private schools and, and and to me i think they have that i think they have the right to say hey listen we own this right it's just another form of private property right is all it is and then if they're going to teach things inside of that like if it's a private school and it's faith-based mm-hmm. okay i think that then you should expect that when you go in there this is what's going to be brought up these are the conversations right. you're going to have this is going to be the speech that we don't accept around here right uh, and if you don't like that right you don't put your kids inside of that school right so i think that to me private school falls into the same premise of your house mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying now you might have freedoms inside there where you don't i'm not going to get all worked up over this but there might be certain lines where you say this is absolutely unacceptable right right and and i and i think that when it comes to all three of those the church private school 
um, or an employer. Mm -hmm. They all effectively are the same. And if we want to talk about any monies that are going to them, that's an entirely different topic. Right. But they are privately owned. And so, therefore, they all can make the different rules. And then people can decide whether they want to agree to those rules mm -hmm. upon coming in. It's just like if I go to your house, you might say, hey, look, I'm a pastor. It's my house. We don't really like profanity here. Right. You could say that. And then I need to respect that. Come to my house. It's a little bit different rules. Um, I have I have my rules like, hey, don't talk trash to my, about my wife or to my wife or my children right. or any of the other people that are in the house. If you do, I will tell you to leave. Let me right? ask you a question. OK, go ahead, go ahead. And I'll try to remember my question. Go ahead. I'll go. go ahead. OK. All right. What if you went the other way? What if you said, hey, in my house, you have to say the F word at least six times before you. I mean, like, like we always think about what we can't say, but right. what we talk about, we talk about. No, you have to say this. Well, so I like, think they, I then make the same decision to go. I'm not going to go to your house and drop the f bomb. Like, what are you talking about, man? Like, we always think about what we. Can't I mean, it's an say. interesting concept. I mean, my 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 gut reaction would be to say, you can't force somebody to do something. Okay. Um, but then again, but I you just did if you tell me I can't. But then I look back and I say, well. I, I, I can put forth a condition under which I'm going to allow you onto my property. Right. For instance, I can say, hey, you have to be fully dressed to come to my home. Okay. Or if I was a nudist, I might say, no clothes if you come to my home. Right. Um, so I think you can put forth some sort of, uh, not limitation, but uh, condition right, under but, which somebody is permitted to be in, on your property. But what I'm saying is that we tend to take it towards the negative where right. you said... Hey, we don't cuss in my house. Right. Okay. But what happens when you go, no, we do when we kind of expect you to while you're here. And I go, right. oh, but dude, I don't cuss anywhere I go. Right. You, you know, like and, we and always then, think of the right. other, we always think of, don't say this. But what about what right. they're telling you you have to say this? Because isn't right. there a level of where we're told to say a lot of things? Right. We don't really believe them. So do we lose free speech in that? Right. I don't I don't know that it would, I, I wouldn't okay. call it losing free speech because it is somebody else's property mm -hmm. and they are basically setting the condition under which you can... Uh, door, partic not go. participate on that property and so i would say yeah they are free to make that that rule um and the only thing that they could do is the same thing they could do if you violate it in the reverse they could say you need to leave yeah but it would be difficult because i i mean i guess it's kind of odd because if you use a profanity that i don't like mm -hmm. then i could say hey i told you not to say that get the heck out right but if I say, hey, you haven't used this profanity or you enough, haven't said yeah, this. You haven't said the F bomb nearly enough for this. You might say, well, I was just warming up. I'm getting there. I'm yeah, all, I'm going to yell them all out at right, one time right, when I leave. Right. So it's, <laughs> it's an interesting little uh, you know, thing to think about. But no, I think there is a, I think it, I think it does flow in both directions. But yeah, I think, because I think what is, is that so many times that, that if we're getting into the government area right. and that they almost tell us what we should be saying. Right. It's not about what not what not to say. It's what is to say. Right. So we're losing free speech in the sense they're telling us what to say, not that they're telling us what not to say. Right. If, if that makes sense. Right. And that, they're, they're trying to get us to walk certain lines. They want us to say certain things and talk right. a certain way. And, and so now they're telling us what to say, and I'm losing right. free speech inside of that. And and a lot of companies actually do what you just described. Okay. For instance, when I worked at a, um, I think it was Burger King, you weren't permitted to wear a uh, no you were you were you weren't allowed to go across the street and go to the other restaurant and then bring their food back and yep. eat it you know you Pepsi, weren't you Pepsi weren't, and Coke will really <clears throat> strict guidelines along those right so so there are companies where they're mm -hmm. like hey we have a, we have a competitor you can't and and I and I think I've even seen where they say if you're wearing our uniform you cannot enter yep. into that establishment yeah. wearing our uniform so you have to take the uniform off or cover up so that people can't see you um, so, you know, that kind of already does happen. Those are conditions on some sort of association, whether it's being allowed on the premises, being allowed to work with somebody, so on and so forth. And churches do it all the time, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, at least when I was going to church, they would say like, hey, you need to behave in a particular manner when you're not in church. And if we find out, then maybe we scold you. And if, you know, if it gets to a certain yeah, point. Yeah, we, we have biblical expectations. Right. And if it gets to a certain mm -hmm. point, then we're going we're to excuse you. Yep. Right. You know. Um, the easiest example you got into. I did yeah. the, the, the easiest lot of discipline there. The, the easiest example to give people that may not be attenders of any worship uh, facilities okay. would be to say if you're in leadership that, that was yes. the easiest one yep okay so if you're in leadership we expect that um, you're not living with your significant other who, whom you're not married with yeah we have standards yeah right and um, which in, in some of these standards aren't necessary, depending on the church, they aren't necessarily applied to the members. There's a little bit more 
looseness with the members that yes. sometimes is yeah. not with the leadership. We don't, we, here's the thing right. is, is that we may not like it, right? but um, we have a certain level of, okay, you know, if right. you're not in this level of leadership, right. we actually do that. We do right. in our church. We have certain things that we say, hey, listen, right. you're here and now you're expected to be at a higher standard. Right. This doesn't really fit into, I guess this doesn't fit into our free speech, but the idea is there. And right. you kind of put these standards in place based upon right. who you are and what role you play. Right. So it can happen inside of a company. Like, yeah. you know, these are people just working mm -hmm. in the garage. You expect them to talk a certain way. Right. But if they kind of improve and brought themselves up to a higher level where they're working in headquarters right. of an office, you might go, hey, dude, you can't really talk here like the way you did in the garage back then. Right. You know, stuff along those lines. So, right. But they have a right to. Right. And in, in, in free speech, you know, as it's generally defined, is more than just words coming out of our mouth. Okay. Things that we might type online, yeah. right? Uh-huh. Uh, images that we might post, things that we might wear. You know, a lot of these things are considered freedom of speech, you know. So if I wear something, you know, in a very offensive T-shirt, mm -hmm. um, the Supreme Court would say, hey, that's freedom of speech. You're allowed to wear that that T-shirt. That okay. However, you, as a property owner, might say, that T-shirt is not, you, you cannot wear that while you come into my house. Or... Our church does not allow that uh, allow that kind of stuff to be worn in this uh, in this facility. And I went to a private school years ago where we had to wear. We were actually told like if you wanted to go to this private school, you have to wear a suit and tie. The girls have yep, to wear. That's, yep. the gr and girls you cannot wear with an pants. Go, I follow. Or I don't yep. follow. Girls had to wear skirts. Mm -hmm. And um, on the days that we didn't have to wear a uniform, you were not permitted to wear a. Um, uh, printed tee or mm -hmm. a graphic tee. You, yep. you only could wear like a plain solid color, color, solid yep. color. And um, I, I get all that. I was a dean of students. Right. I, I know exactly and, what you're saying. <laughs> and, and we we found it frustrating because we were like, we want to wear our favorite religious rock band. And they were like, sorry, the, the, the rules are the rules. Well, you'll enjoy that right. at your house. And, and, and we didn't like it, but those were the rules that were set forward in um, not only your that curtailed your freedom of speech, mm -hmm. but were kind of tied to the freedom of association. Right, and and that's part of yes. how this this restriction can happen because it's basically saying, I will only associate with you or permit you to associate with me on on my property under these conditions, mm -hmm. you know. And I could do the same to you and your property. I could say, Tub, if I come over to your house, I get free use of all the f bombs I want. And you could say, No, you don't. No, you don't. And then I could say, Well, I guess I'm not coming over. And I say. Well, best of luck to right. you. I'll see you right. in the next social. And, yeah. <laughs> right. Alternatively, you could say, man, I really like DL. I'm going to let him I'll, I'll let him drop a couple right. of bombs. Right, right. And, and, and you might. I mean, um, and I know you won't, but yeah. or I don't think you would. Yeah. But what, regardless of whether you would or not, you have that freedom to, right. right? You have the freedom to decide what speech works on your property. And, and it really does kind of dovetail very nicely with the freedom of association. Yeah, I think it, yeah because and, and you decided that that's it. what. Why. Now, real quick, as you're saying, like there's two things. So one is kind of funny. All right, so yesterday we had some visitors at the church, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. We we kind of strive for that, right? Um, so we actually we they they because they, they knew other people inside the church, so we all were going to lunch together. Right. So I had to all go to lunch. So I'm pulling out behind them, and they got a little sticker up on their car, and it says "baby" up in this, and I just kind of chuckled a little bit because it's kind of funny. So when we got to the restaurant, I said, hey, listen, I said, I just need to kind of explain this to you. Like, yeah, like, you know, you had this sticker on here and, you know, and they're like, oh, they're like, oh, I said, nah, I don't care. And then, you know, like, I just kind of really messed with like, nah, dude, like, it's, it's not that big a deal. We're fine. Now, with all of that, we kind of, we, we, I probably wouldn't put that on my car. Right. But it doesn't mean I'm not amused by, because here's what happens. I think Chris just started saying, well, you shouldn't. If you're reading that and it has the F word in there, you should laugh at it. Right. And it's still kind of funny. Like right. you just showed me a video with that girl straight up cussing and just right. dropping it. And I'm like, that video would have been a lot shorter if you pulled all of those out. Like I don't get so worked up. And right. I think that that's our problem is that we get all worked up because we want other people to fall into right. our standard. Yep. And it's not about you yep. following my standard. I have my standard for me. Right. Maybe I have my standard for my house right. or my wife or my kids or you know what right. I'm saying, that we don't do this. So the other side of this was, okay, so when the, it was all going down on for Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that, which mm -hmm. all you Twitter people, best of luck to you. Um, I'm off it's Facebook. Tough, it's, it's a tough audience for sure. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Is that uh, Facebook, I, I am there because the campaign makes me be there. Right. All right. So when all that started going on, well, we'll, see, we'll use Trump as our example for a moment. Okay. Okay. So when Trump got kicked off and like, you're taking away his free speech, they own that. Right. 
I, I think they have, and, and I kind of got into it with some people like, oh, they can't just silence him. I, I think they can. Right. It's their private platform, technically. Right. Just because you went, you chose to go on it, which is great, but then you abide by what they say right. is acceptable. And right. if you don't, here's what's going to happen. Right. So I was never one of these guys who's like, that's wrong, and they need to be putting back on. No, they right. have that right. Because right. they own that, and and, no, and and that did create. I mean, even in libertarian circles, there was some debate because, and, and a lot of the debate tends to be on how much uh, a libertarian believes the organization is working at the behest of the government. Okay, right, and I I think the one and and one thing that I found very interesting is that. <clears throat> There were two sides. There was the people that said, "Oh, you can't do this," and it was like, "Well, you can't yeah, somebody you can. can't pull them off." There was that. Yeah, you, yeah, you, pull them off. yeah, you can't remove. Them, okay, you know. All right. And then there were other people who were just like, um, "Yeah, you can. That's it. End of story." And then if you criticized it, that crowd, the one that said, "Oh, yeah, you totally can," they would be like, "Dude, it's private business." And it's like, "Yes, it is a private business. I get that. Mm -hmm. I can criticize them. Most definitely. I can tell them that was a bad move because I am a user." And wow, that sounds kind. Of, someone's gonna sniff that's, that. Yep, they're gonna be like, <laughs> and that's gonna be used for so many yep, things. Yep. So um, let me just. <laughs> it's the way that right there. Can see. <laughs> so we're good to go here. Just show this other arm. There's nothing going on here. So there we're, are we're other good. places though. Y yes, I know. In between my toes, blah, that I've heard from television. Can you? But please. We'll trust you on so, this one. All yeah, right. we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to operate on some trust here. But but it's the idea that, you know what I can do? I can go into McDonald's. Come and say, McDonald's sucks. Right. Hey, I'm like a number one, please. Right. <laughs> you know, and then yeah. I can and then I can right. expect that just maybe I get a sneezer. Right. <laughs> right. In, you know, and and, and, and and I think that was one of the big problems in the libertarian community is that some people kind of took it and they were very absolutist about it. They were just like, no, it's private business. I can't say anything. And I was like, no, I can say something. Mm -hmm. I can criticize them all day long. I can say that is a terrible idea. That is a terrible way to do business. Yep. Right. And and that is also part of freedom of speech, you know, and it was it was just it's just interesting to see because my position was. I I get why a lot of people didn't want Trump to be on Twitter. Right. Um, but honestly, he kind of made it amusing. Did you know, so, like, <laughs> I mean, he left and there's how much of their stuff thought, okay, like, right. he was there for the entertainment factor, and, and, you know. He, here's the thing. And I don't, I, I wouldn't I, use the law to say that they can't remove the president. Right. Uh, I would not want to use the law. Now, if I found out that government forces were coming to Twitter and saying, look, this in the future, we're going to be in power. Right. So therefore, we need you to do some favors for then I have a huge problem yeah, with but that. But that's a whole that's a whole nother well, that's issue. That's not outside. freedom of speech and that's right. not freedom of you know um, using your own property. Now, let, let, let me tell you something. I am not an advocate of them kicking people off. Like right. I'm just not. I'm like, you know what, if you truly want to be a platform of voices and right. opinions, right. you you can let them all yeah. fly. You yeah. know, but I'm saying that they have the right to. And once again though, so what, what I think we have to understand is the fact that you have the right to say things, but then there also is a chance for consequences to right. what you say. Right. And I, so I think that if you say certain things, there's people who go, okay, I'm not going to talk to you. I don't want right. to be around you. You don't get to just say whatever you want because you want to say it and everybody just has to accept it. That's not right. what this is saying. Right. And I think that that's what's often said is that they think that because they disagree with it, mm -hmm. you don't have a right to say it. Right. And that's what we're, we're traveling down that road right now. Yeah. I don't like what you're saying. You don't get to say it at all. Okay. Well, that's not what this is supposed right. to come to. Yeah. So and that's that next part here. Where it oh, says, is it? Okay. Yeah. Well, well um, it says they shouldn't impose their policies on their neighbors. Right. Yes. So if I live next door to you mm -hmm. and I like to go out and work in my yard and, you know, maybe build stuff and I'm playing some radio and you don't, maybe you don't like that particular station. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you know, you can't say like DL, um, you can't listen to that. Because that's not what I would listen to. Right. Right. Like we can't do that. Um, it gets into a little trickier matter if if the radio is too loud. Too loud. Right. Um, and that's its own issue. Uh -huh. But as far as like what we can tell people they can and cannot do and impose upon them, um, no. Like freedom of speech is just that. It's, yeah. So you know what? It's, it's what's often gets mentioned is you you can't yell fire in right. a movie theater. And we were talking about this briefly before. I said yes, you can. Right. 
Yes, you, they cannot tell you you cannot yell fire in a movie theater. Yes, you can, because if there's a fire, right. you are very much allowed, because they yeah. always go to that argument. You can yeah. just say whatever you want. You can't yell fire in a movie theater. Yes, I can't if there is one. Right. So it's the idea that if I'm stating a truth, yeah. just because you don't like it doesn't mean right. I don't get to say it. Right. And, and there's our problem. And and, and for people, and we're not going to get into the, the legal aspect of it, like what has our law said, what have court cases said, but just as a matter of libertarian principles, mm -hmm. if I if you own a movie theater and I come in and there's a nice movie playing, and all of a sudden I yell fire and there is no fire, right? Um, I've committed fraud. Right. I have violated any 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 contractual obligation that I have. Mm -hmm. Right. It's kind of like when you go to get on an airplane and you're sitting right next to that door, yeah. and they say. If you sit next to this door, you have this responsibility. You have this responsibility. If you're not willing, you need to move to a different seat. Yep. Right. It's part of like what you agree. If I go into a movie theater, I maybe I didn't specifically agree to it. Like I didn't like read a paper and sign it sign and everything. Mm -hmm. But I have agreed to remain quiet during the movie. It doesn't matter whether I'm yelling fire or Get him, get him, kill him, you know, like, watch out, uh -huh. run, that, you know. You know? That, that, that happens too. I, it does yeah. happen. And I mean, in in, in the strictest sense, it is it is a violation, right? Mm -hmm. Now, and, and the movie theater could remove you for it. They yes. could say like, look, you are being too loud. You need to leave. People are trying to enjoy this movie. And then you would need to leave, yep. right? Now, if the they, consequences of and, the and if, things that I say. And if the movie theater cho chooses not to remove people... That, that's it's you know that's and, their business. But then, but then other people go. I'm not going there because a lot of people just act like right. fools. And I don't want to be right. a part of it. Right. So so here's what happened. I don't know if I'm jumping us too far ahead. Is is because I'm like you know what? Because I, I mentioned this last time, and he'd be like, "Tough, still my show. You're just the producer." Right. And and, and he can say, "Hey," because remember I said we have to come to a point that we where we start coming up with solutions. Right. Because we, we yes. tend to as libertarians, we'll get in a circle, we'll complain, but then we'll all kind of agree. Yeah, that's wrong. Okay. Right. So what do we do? Right. And, and so for me, what I try to be an advocate of is um, I don't have to like what you're saying for you to be able to say it. And I think that we have to start defending the people who say things even that we don't like. Right. Like, I, I don't think that us going, hey, you have a right to say that. And, you know, I don't like it. Right. But you have a right to. I don't think we speak up enough in those situations. I, I right. think that we speak up if we, if we, if we're like, oh, you suck or whatever. But right. we're like, you know what? We need to stand up for them sometimes. Yes. That maybe you don't like Trump. Right. Okay, so be it. But you know what? I would. I think that we have to be willing to go. Okay, we don't have to like him, mm -hmm. but we shouldn't be so quick to let them just dismiss him right. off of something. Yep. And and I think that we have to find those places where we start making a stand, even if we don't like the people, even if we don't like what they're saying, even right. if we don't like their direction. Yeah. Because at some point it will come back at you. Yes. And then if you keep doing that, at some point when it comes back at you, you're going to be the only one to defend yourself. Right. And you're going to lose also. Right. It, it's, it's, a, it's a while back. Um, I, I remember there were a couple of city council members here in town. We're talking about shutting down a strip club here in town. Mm -hmm. They're bragging. We're going to shut that right. down. And they did all. And I actually got involved somewhat. And I was like, hey, um, then I'm right to do this now. When, when I posted something about it, I was like, hey, let me be very clear. Right. I don't go to the strip club. Right. I don't do a strip club. I'm not even condoning what's going on in the strip club, but they have their right. Right. They have their right to do that. These councilmen do not have a right to get involved and try to do it just because they don't like it. Right. And a lot of people are like, whoa, wait, wait. You know, like, hey, wait a minute. And you'd be surprised how many people who are pro strip club were like, well, oh. Right. I said, listen, I said, I don't like it, but I think you have a right to be there and say and do right. what's happening. Yeah. Uh, and then there were a number of Christians who came out like, you can't support them. Right. Yes, I can. Only because if, if we're I not, can, how is it? I, did? I just did it. Exactly. But my, here's my fear is it, it's always, I'm, a, I'm the what's next guy. Right. So if we don't defend something over there, even if we don't like it, if they start learning, they can shut us down, shut us down, shut us down. What happens when it gets to the church? Right. So I think we have to be willing to start making stands right. in places. I know you do this quite often. If yeah. You're on Twitter. It's, yeah. It's, it's that phrase. Uh, I, and I don't remember the exact phrasing, but it's basically um, your commitment to freedom of speech is uh is is reflected by the the speech that you hate or something like that. but but by by your defense of the speech that you okay. hate or something like that there, there, I'm, I'm i'm drawing a blank on it i'm totally but i know that there's something along the line of you know when like that's the truest test the truest test is will you defend speech that you hate defending speech that you uh, love is easy that's easy like mm -hmm. that that you know there's like no kudos to you for that 
like not real. I mean, it's good. I mean, you, you, mean, you easy. shoot. There's, there's no it's risk so easy. In that. There's no risk. There's nothing to you. Uh -huh. And yeah, I do it all the time, and I get in so, I get so much heat from libertarians all the time because you you know you've got like we we have our cliques and our our, our, our groups that For you know like to fight each other, and I get in there sometimes, and I'm like. I usually I, I usually look for the nuance and, and I say, is there any nuance here to be to be had mm -hmm. that might, you know, that might need to be decoupled a little bit okay. from what's being said? So I, this happened recently. I'm not going to tell you who I'm not going to get into all the details of it. But we'll, Somebody's gonna know. Well, well, somebody might Somebody's know. Gonna know. Um, and then but, one of the comments. Show for one but, of the comments. But somebody said something uh -huh. um, on Twitter and I got carried over to Facebook and it's a libertarian, a known libertarian. And they said something, and I didn't think it, the way they said it was appropriate. Okay. But what they said, there was some merit. I'm like, mm -hmm. there was some, they were expressing skepticism in what some other Twitter user had said. Okay. And I was like, you know, I think it's fair to, to, to have this question, this skepticism of what right. this original person said. It's probably best to not say anything. And I get where this person has said something, you know, that's inappropriate. Um, but I think that there's, uh, you know, there's some merit here and that, w that we need to have that kind of conversation because what I feel happens is people don't like the way that something right. is said it, and they shut it all, all down. down and then we're not having a lot of conversation. And I think this conversation that we could be having, if we, if we were seeking it out would bring us to a better understanding of each other. Right. So if you say something and then I sort of express some skepticism of it, then what needs to be addressed is why do you have this skepticism? Okay. You know, um, is it for some facetious reason or is there something legitimate underneath of it? Right. But, right. And, but I think we also have to understand that when you say something I disagree with, I, I don't have free speech just to get you on my side. I, right. I, I want us to understand we have free speech. Even if it's not to win you over to my thinking. Right, right, right. Like, I want us to have free speech that we can disagree. Right. And you might not ever come to my side. I might right. not ever go to your side. But I want you right. to have the right to wherever you are to right. be able to go, hey, here's what I right. believe. And in, in this particular case that I'm talking about, uh -huh. this wasn't really a, um, uh, in the, tr like, this was just public members, people, you know, publicly criticizing another person. So there wasn't really a free speech issue here. Okay. But I think that's where it starts, mm -hmm. right? I think it starts by saying, okay, I get it. When I talk to DL, he's going to drop a lot of F-bombs, If I and, and that's just who he is. And for now, I'm gonna, you know, I may have to be willing to hear it a little bit in order it's, to, I do that to, have a, I go. to have a future I, conversation with, yep. with him, right? And then that, because what you've done is you've basically now primed yourself to be thinking, okay... When to to not be thinking in what you dislike so much. Okay. And I think that is the foundation that carries over when it comes time to defend free speech. We cannot right? do so. I don't like. If them. we get if we get so used to just criticizing and shutting people down, where free speech isn't an issue, right? Where it's just personal inter right. inter interpersonal interactions, right? If we get used to just shutting people down in that space. When it comes time to, we're not really in a position to defend free speech when it comes, to, when it matters. That's right. When the government comes along and says, you know, we could shut these people down for saying these kind of things. We might say, you know what? And some people go, that's a good that. idea. You should do that. Right. No. Or and, that's when you go, no. So we have to be that all the, you know, all the time. Mm -hmm. And so, and it's very, very difficult because there are times where it is appropriate to say, I don't want to associate with you because of the way you talk. But I think it's a very fine line at that point. We have to balance and say, I don't want to. I, you know, I want to, I want to let you know that, yeah, you have that freedom of speech. I just don't want to be a part of it. So years ago when I was on Facebook initially, mm -hmm. uh, I was a troublemaker. Like yeah. I, I launched a bomb. Like I knew what I was doing. I put something out there and people would start co having a conversation about it and it would go. So you have to understand that I have one very gay liberal brother mm -hmm. and I have one very way West side redneck brother-in-law. Okay. And. Two very different worlds. Right. So I would put something on. I there. hope they're not listening. Oh, the one definitely is. Uh -oh. I can assure you. Right I hope now. you're saying. Who, I hope you're speaking well of that person. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're good. I got nothing. Uh, get, it's, 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 uh, if you need to fight no, him, don't bring it to me. No, he, I'm sure he said he's even told me he listened. So we're we're good. We're All good. Right. All right. Don't get me so, in trouble. No, but here's I'm the a funny, little guy. Is that, and, and listen. So, um, 
they, so then what would happen was they would get on there mm -hmm. and they'd have a conversation and, and at some point it would explode. Right. And when it explode, I mean that, whoa, the F bombs are coming, all this other stuff is coming. And it's not always the West Side redneck is the one that's instigating. I want to make that very clear. Oh, yeah. You, you know? So I finally got to the point, I'm like, you know what? Guys, I get like I've at that point, I think I was leaving the church already. Okay. And, and so I was kinda like, oh, you know what? This is I can't because if people come to my page, they just see this stuff blowing up like that. Right. Like, oh, all right. So I just shut down my page. Right. Because th that's that was my way of handling. I didn't try to go right. to them and say, y'all shouldn't talk ever talk like this. Right. I removed myself. Right. Right. And I think that that's what we have to be more willing to do. Right. If, if there are situations where people talk a certain way, it's our topic. Right. That they talk a certain way, you can either a agree to be a part of it. Right. Or not be a part yeah. of it. And, and or you insert yourself and you go, I I'm going to yep. be willing to accept this, yep. but you might come to a point where you go, too much, yep. I'm out. But I think that's where I don't like. I never ever wanted to silence either one of those two. Right. Look, I, right. I, go have at it. If, yeah. I, if I don't agree with maybe my brother, <laughs> right. If I don't agree with him, okay. Right. Th that's fine. But you have your right to say it. Yeah. And, and I think that what our problem is is that it's growing. That if I don't like it, you deserve to be silenced. Right. And, and I think that the problem is we're, we're so focused on our differences mm -hmm. that we're not willing to come together where we need to in certain things and go, wait a minute, they're not going, we're not, I'm not going to allow them to silence you, right. even though I hate what you're saying. Right. Because at some point they, we have to drop yeah. this junk and start kind of coming together and yeah. start coming together in the sense that, all right, you know what? It's us against them. Right. Because. While this is happening, the government's perfectly fine with this. Yeah. The government's perfectly fine. I mean, we're the one being divided, yes. not the government. Not them. And so right. they're doing this, and, and we're allowing them to. Yeah. So you have some that are carrying the torch for government, and you have others like us who are like, no, forget that mess. Right. You know? But I think that we should all have our place. But I think that what has to happen, both sides have to be willing to go, let them do it. Right. And how, so how, I guess my question is, how do we get the other side? Because there is a silence on side. Right. It's just a shut them all up. We don't care. Get rid of all of them. Right. Okay. How do we get them? Like, and not being ugly, but like, seriously, how do right. we reach out to them and say, hey, guys, here's what's happening? Well, like, I, how do you get the, them over? One of the things that I do is I, I try to be very, very consistent when I'm defending people. Okay. And I, I took heat in the last week and a half uh, for defending some people. In, in the in the reason is because you've got like crowd A, got crowd B, and um, they get so focused on what crowd A wants, what crowd B wants sometimes that they're just fighting and they're not really listening to the other other crowd. And I look and I say, well, we need to listen to both of them. And you know, sometimes crowd A, maybe the way they're saying it's not so pleasant, but mm -hmm. they're they're kind of making a point. Yep. And I think that's where we have to be. We have to be in a, in a place where we can hear something that's very offensive and very terrible, and still. If there's something meaningful underlying, identify it. Right. And and I feel that I feel that when we get but, so focused on what we're saying. Hold on, isn't that dangerous also though? Because if you say, hey, there's a point that's inside of there, but you're saying it's a point that I agree with, so we should make we should, we should allow them to make that. I, I want us to be able to say that's right. the dumbest thing I've ever right. heard. Right. right. But go ahead. Right. And you know, and and so I think that the way that we address this is to we need to defend those people very clearly and unambiguously. Okay. Right. And and this is what I've done. I've de you know I was talking about crowd A, crowd B, and I've defended both of them. And I have noticed that sometimes people from like let's just say crowd A are mad about how crowd B has said something, right? And then I come along and I say, well, you know, it's probably not best worded like that, and you know, but they do have a point, mm -hmm. you know. And a lot of members of crowd A will be like, yeah, you're terrible. You're just sympathizing for them, right? Whatever. And but then I've seen some members from Crowd A go, well, yeah, I, I guess you kind of got a point, and you defended me one time when I right. when I stepped over it, mm -hmm. right? Um, or you just defended me in general, whatever, you know. And and I think that's the the way that we bring people in is not to condemn them so quickly, right. but to defend them when it's their turn to be defended. So right. And then I think the other approach that we can take, and I have this friend. He has since moved, I believe, Arizona. He's a very interesting character. He did not like profanity. He wasn't a religious guy. In fact, he okay. was an atheist. But he didn't like profanity. He was very awkward. Very okay. awkward fellow. And uh, I don't mean yeah. that in a negative sense. I mean, just like he had these peculiarities about him. Okay. 
right? And uh, but he was a super great guy, like super duper nice guy. Like like nobody would ever say like, man, that guy is such a terrible guy. Like you just couldn't say that. And um, one of the things I would sometimes make crash jokes, very you know sexually explicit jokes, and he didn't. Those he really didn't like. Okay. And he would just excuse himself, mm-hmm. right? And it sounds simple enough, but that wasn't the only thing he did. He continued to be my friend, continued yes. to associate with me. And like he would, like I, I remember one time he was at my house, not this house, he was at my house, and I had made some explicit jokes or something like that. And then a few minutes later, I saw him in a different room, just sitting there. I think he was with somebody else, but he was in a different room. He, mm-hmm. And it was, and it was very clear to me what happened. He didn't want to be a part of that anymore. Right. So I started when he was around curtailing myself. Yes. Not at his request. Nope. He didn't say, deal, you can't say that. He just excused me. I mean, I think a couple times he would question it. He would be like, why do we have to talk like that? Right. Very interesting. Like, you know, it's very non-threatening, right? Because mm-hmm. if someone's like, Tub, you can't say that. The first, our first uh, instinct would be like, the hell I can't. R- right. I can say whatever I damn well please. Right. Right. But if we say, dude, really, I mean, was that really all that necessary? Yeah, you was know? that word necessary at that point? Did it right. make your point any better? Right. Yes. You know, like you just said one sentence and it had 16 words in it and 14 were F-bombs. I, I'm not really sure what you were trying to say. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like we, like there are different ways to handle this stuff so that pe- so that we are still approachable and that people will still hear us. And then that's how we influence them, right? If we don't like particular speech, we need to be of the character that makes this person actually want to engage with us on so, our terms. So there has to be a little more chiming in. We got to be a little more intentional in, in those situations where we go, guys, it's fine. Right. Like, let it, let it, like, yeah. and that we have to, even, maybe there has to be times where we jump in and we don't even state our opinion. It's not right. like, oh, they're okay, even though, right. well, we just go, you know what, guys, let him just say what he has to say. Right. Like maybe we need to do that more, even if you disagree with right. them. Let them say yes. what they have. And that's all you say. Like yeah. if, it's, if it's Facebook or Twitter or whatever it is, you go, right. it, maybe your simplest explanation should just go, let him say what he has to say. Yeah, it's it's the strip club yes. paradox. I don't, know if it's really a, I don't know if it's really a paradox, right? But I mean, I can imagine you literally saying, Hey, no, no, you can't shut them down. That is unacceptable. They have the freedom to be open and to have all the naked women run around their facility that they want on Saturday. And then on Sunday, to a different set of people, yacht not go to strip clubs because let, 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 that's let me, against what Jesus would want. And you're going to have to wash your eyes out with Jesus. Let me Jesus, make it so. very clear. Seven days a week, I'm telling Christians. Right. Do not go. I'm telling Christians we have yeah, to be careful yeah. how we speak. Right. Okay. I'm not telling them what to say. I'm not telling them their thoughts. We have to be we have to be able to express ourselves in certain right. ways that we don't demean other people. Right. That we don't say those type of things. We don't use certain language. That has to be right. who we are. That's all the time. Right. Then I remember that guess what? There are a lot of people who don't know Jesus as Savior. Right. And for them, that's a luck to you. Go have at it. Like right. th- there was actually a time when um I was counseling a couple. She was a Christian. He was not. Okay. Okay. And then like, it's so funny because I, I found out later on that he, the first time he came to counseling, mm-hmm. he was drunk. It was just kind of funny. Um, he, speci- he got drunk specifically because like, I'm, I don't want to go deal with this. And, and I remember that inside of that, he would say certain things. And I'd be like, okay. And, and then I would look at her. She, I'd be like, well, no, 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 no. You don't get to say that. She goes, what do you mean? He just, I said, oh, hold on. He's not a Christian. So I don't have these standards for you. See, right. here's certain things that once you gave your life to Christ, you came to a standard. You said, okay, this is who I have right. to be now. You chose in. Right. Same thing with the people I hang out with, the things that I do. You chose in. You chose into a certain standard. When you went into a job, you said, hey, I usually talk like this, but I can't do this here. Right. You chose in. Right. Whatever the happens, I come to your house. I don't get to talk like this because I chose in. Right. I think Christianity is the same way. You chose in. Right. And so now there's a standard inside of that. Right. You, you know, so I think that these all of these things can right. hold true. I think that they can be, you have a right to do I try to almost pride myself, not to use that in the wrong way, but I try to pride myself in the fact that um, I don't have to agree with you. Mm-hmm. I don't have to like the language that you use. Right. But you know what? I'm still going to talk to you. And we're still, like right. how many times have we been down sitting in your kitchen? You drop F-bombs and stuff. Right. And I don't go... Yeah, come on, dude. Really? Like, right. Like, like it, I, I see I, a I just, twinkle in your eye. Every right. now and then, I'm like, oh, you know, he's going to hell. And he doesn't seem to care. Uh, but, but inside of this, I, I, I think that we all have to come to this point where we go. I don't like it, 
Right. We have a right to. Right. And, and then I think that once we get there, so that's like step one. Step right. one has to be, I don't like it, but they have a right to. Right. Step two has to be, we actively get involved in protecting their right to. Right. Rather than just go, ah, and then make my point, okay. No, no, maybe we chime in. Maybe we chime right. in and go, you know what? Just let them say what yep. he has to say. And and I find that if you, um, let's say you're the pro, you know, you're the one that's saying all the kind of crazy stuff, right? Uh, and, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm the guy that's like, you don't that seems that. like us. That seems so, about how this would go. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So, you know, and what I try to do is I try to, you know, we'll sometimes say, yeah, Tub, that one, you, you kind of went a little far on that one. Yeah. <laughs> and then other times we're like, really? Like, are you what, mad at him about over this? What's more important? I mean, like, it wasn't that big of a deal. And what he, what he was saying is, you know, something that really, really needed to be said. Blah, blah. You know, and I try, and you, you don't always win. Just like sometimes you, sometimes you get it wrong. Right. You know, sometimes maybe I support something where I should have maybe given more, um, more criticisms and sometimes the other way around. Sometimes I criticize something where I should have been a little bit more supportive. But ultimately what I think people end up seeing is, hey, this person recognizes that I'm not all bad. Right. That there well, are just some things well, what, what, that aren't, ex that aren't, aren't, aren't the best. Right. Once again, and I know what so then they are more willing to hear what you have, have to, to say, say about this. But I, I, I don't want us to make this based on the top. I don't want to be topic about anything. I want us to chime in and go, he has a right to say it. Let right. Him say, let right. him say what he has to say. Like maybe you get it because you're on Twitter. Yeah. Like, obviously, I'm not. And this happens. You know, right. they shut them all up and type of thing. But wouldn't it be effective if you just got in there and said, let him say what he has to say? Right. Maybe you do a hashtag. Do the hashtag on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then you do like a hashtag free speech. Right. And that's it. Not right. about, well, understand his point or understand their point. No, no, no. I'm not getting involved gotcha. in the argument. Gotcha. I'm getting involved in let him say what he has to say. Right. Even if you don't like it, let right. him speak. Right. And so maybe we have to have a level of that. Maybe it's right. time that even if we hate somebody, maybe we don't like them at right. all. We don't like anything they stand right. for. We don't like the words that they use, but they have their right to right. be that way. Right. That we just go... Let them talk. Right. Well, that 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 actually just happened, and I can actually say these names are more public, and so it's not like I'm bringing any heat okay. on it. Um, so there's the there, there's Dave Smith. He's the uh, comedian, mm -hmm. and he interviewed uh, who who he didn't interview him. He went on a debate. Um, so there was like a third party who was hosting it and kind of okay. moderating. And um, so he had a debate with a gentleman called uh, named Nick Fuentes. Nick Fuentes was I, I was telling you about this yes. earlier. Yep. He's the guy that's kind of like you know, oh no, what about the white people? We're all gonna be. You know, we're all going to be pushed out of society because there's so many brown people. He's kind of like this, you know, this kind of alarmist kind of attitude. Right. And he said some things. And, um, you know, I was like, look, you know, people were upset that one Dave even had the conversation. Um, some of them were just like, oh, you should, be, you know, because they, they 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 so badly don't want this person, Nick Fuentes, to have any voice that they want to shut it down. Everyone. I'm like, no, as reasons aside, he has the right. We should be defending it. Yep. Right. But then, if, but I think that there's some value there. We look at it and we say, but why? Well, one is part of the right. So there's that. And then two, um, there's a value in hearing what somebody has to say because it, it, the, the more you understand somebody, the more they think that you care about what mm -hmm. they have to say, the more they're willing to listen to you. When you kind of, mm -hmm. you know. Well, it's gonna that mm -hmm. brings us back to topic again. And I don't it want, does. I don't want it to be about, like, I don't want to, I, 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 think I there... don't want to fall into the trap of, well, I agree with what he's saying. So, not, no, pull the topic. Like, I don't right. care what I, they're saying. I, 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 I get what you're. Right to go, reasons right. I'm saying what they say. Yeah, I, and, and, and what makes it, I think what keeps drawing me back to the topic part mm -hmm. is the fact that most of the domains that I'm really operating in right. are not government restrictions. Okay. You know, so in, in, in to kind of reiterate what I said earlier, I think that if we start getting into this particular behavior of shutting people out, right, when it comes time to decide should the government do it, I think we're a lot more primed to be willing participants. Yeah, because we, I don't like them. Yeah, shut them yeah. down. Yeah, right. Get rid of that. That's a good you idea. Know, I think there are a lot of people that are like, you know what, these white supremacists, they're so vile and the things that they say are so terrible that, yeah, it should be against the law anyway. And I look at it and I say, that's because you allowed yourself to become so emotionally entangled with what they were saying yep. that you, and never once defending their right to say it, that when it came, when, when it comes to actually defending the right, you are not prepared. In fact, you are prepared to squash that right. Yeah. But once again, what happens when that comes back at you? You know, and so that's why I think that we have to be open to supporting the ideas that other people have. 
Not that I have to take on their ideas and condone right. but have at it. Yeah. Here's what's the thing. If it's a ludicrous kind of statement, it's going to flesh out anyway. Yeah. You know, people, no people are going to get out there like, right. hey, that's just stupid. Right. That's fine. Let, let both sides of that happen. But right. I want both sides to be able to say whatever stupid things they, is they have to say. Right. And so I think that maybe we have to, like I said, we just have to be proactive and intentional about we insert, not to help make an argument one way or the other, just jump in and say, let them say what they have to say. Right. Done. Right. And then we check out. Like right. We're not there to further it along. But maybe right. if we start inserting that more, right. we become known. This would be a good thing for libertarians because this is a good libertarian area. Of, right. Say what you want to say. So yeah. maybe it would be good if libertarians weren't choosing a side and right. they just said, let them say what they and we And we just, like, what if we started something right. inside the libertarian community that says, hey, you know what? When these things are happening, don't, because there are, right. how many times you read through stuff, you don't get involved. You read and you go, like, there are times, one day I put a thing out there. I said, you know what? Sometimes I keep my dog on its leash. Right. Meaning I'm not putting my dog in this Right. Place. Okay. Oh, I've seen stuff this week and I'm like, nope. Exactly. So, but imagine. Not my business don't care. Imagine in those, if you just said, if, the, if you can see, like, you shouldn't be allowed to, when you start reading that, when somebody says you shouldn't be allowed to. Right. Just give it, let them talk. And whatever right. it happens to be. It right. would be nice if we had something that was cohesive to all of us. Right. That that way there is attributed to this right. group says, let them say what they want to say. Right. So we need somebody important. We need somebody important to get behind this idea that says, okay, here's how we're going to protect free speech for everybody. Aren't when you these, behind it already? I said somebody important. So uh, so what we do is we, we kind of intentionally say, like we come up with something. Right. And we go, whenever we see this happening, even if we don't want to get in the argument, like we look at it and we go, oh, like I don't care about that. Right. But there's somebody's trying to silence somebody because it's happening a lot right. now. Let's just insert yeah. that. We're, we're normalizing happens, silencing right. people. So what happens if... 12 libertarians all of a sudden chimed into somebody's conversation. Maybe they hate the idea of what they're talking about. Right. And 12, the next 12 posts came from somebody to the effect of, let him say what he has to say. Right. Well, like, what would that start doing? That's now a pushback. All right, so 11 watchers. Here we go. You and Tub. Oh, so you're saying, you're not, you're saying, you're saying it's not 10 more. It's, it's, it's me and 11 more, not right. two and 10. Right. But no, you don't say, what if we... Did actively did something that says, "Hey, you know what, guys? We don't like what you're saying, but we really right. believe you have a right to say it." Yeah, and that's what we're losing. And so I think that it's time that we come together and we and we figure out something right. that says, "How do we defend it without like making it about me or my points?" Like I, I'm going to defend this person; they have a right to say it, even though I don't like it. But then we put our opinion inside right. of it. Nope, just yeah. whatever it is. Let's yeah. defer it. So what happens when inevitably, and this would happen, mm -hmm. somebody comes along and says, okay, what's your opinion of this? Oh, I think that's fine. Hey, here I am. But I don't think- No, no, no. Like you chime in and you say, let them speak. Yes. And then I come along and I go, so you're defending them? And then you say, no. And I say, well, what's your opinion on it? I think, I think you're open to it. And, and then you, then yeah, you give I think your that's opinion. Fine. I think that's fine that they get involved. They, <clears> but okay. then, then they would say, oh, wait a minute, you're on the other side of this. Right. That'll happen. Yeah. But and, and but you know what? Sometimes that help that helps us mm -hmm. because then they go, well, what's your opinion? You go, well, here's mine, and you go, oh, he's not in agreement with them. He right. just wants them to speak. Right. I guess fine. Right. But I think that if we just go here, let's leave it here. Yeah. What if somebody does it? What if right. twelve people just go, let them speak, let them speak, let them speak. Right. You know, whatever we do, then. Right. And they go, okay. And then here's the thing. Then maybe the libertarians take this on, and we become as the people who defend all sides of speech. Right. Even when we don't have a dog in the fight. Yeah. So how do we, I guess we start trying to find a way to make that actively happen. Yeah. I, I, oh. I hear somebody's stomach rumbling. He hungry. I might have to feed this man. Yes. Oh, whoa. All right. I didn't know some of the food involved, but okay. All right. So, All right. About to have some leftover turkey. You got leftover turkey? Yeah, from Thanksgiving. Oh, dude, no. <laughs> <laughs> For a second, I'm like, all right, we're going to do this. All right. No, I'm sure we got something better than that. Um, but uh, so, yeah, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I have anything further. You? No, sir. I'm good. All right. Well, folks, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope you understand freedom of speech from the libertarian perspective. And that freedom is that you have the freedom to say anything that you want, as offensive as you want, and the government cannot curtail you. And then we also believe that mm. it's actually a good idea for libertarians to generally defend speech as much as they can. Because if we don't, we run the possibility of falling into the trap of getting the government or permitting the government. Maybe we don't ask them, but maybe we permit the government mm -hmm. to curtail speech when it should not be doing so. So that is the view. And remember, if you yell fire in a movie theater, there ought be a fire. And if there is, 
I do believe that most you places be- accept the uh, that that you are permitted to yell fire. Just don't start so, the fire. Yeah, I, don't start I, the don't, fire yeah. and then yell fire. We are so very you, clearly just, saying yeah. do not start, don't fires start fires in somebody's biz- place of business. So with that, um, we're going ahead and close out. So have a good one. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to libertydadpodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to libertydad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.